Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll begin this very interesting conversation because, you know, uh, in all of this world, whether it be Pakistan or the world over, the West or the East, one thing that uh, people say it makes the world go around is money. And money means economy. Economy also means much more than money, in fact. Economy means how you strengthen uh, your country by different resources, by strengthening its different resources. And how to do that in the light of Islam, in the light of the Quran, in the light of Sunnah, that is what we are going to discuss in yes. this very show. Yes. So my first question to you, Mr. Imran Sandhu, is that when we talk about riba, interest, how uh, uh, can you tell us what are the implications in Quran for accepting riba? Because you know our whole banking system is dependent on it. And how? What is the substitute of it? Because you know when I was doing my research, it was like okay, riba is haram because uh, for a lot of reasons. But one being is it uh, discourages brotherhood, the sense of brotherhood. So can you uh, elaborate on that? Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, I would uh, just uh, try to be as concise as I can be, uh, but this topic is inherently very vast. Yes. Uh, one uh, question answer session may not be enough, so um, let's try to concentrate what is riba. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, um, when we talk about riba or interest. It is a system whereby a person lends to a borrower irrespective of his uh, financial pocket, how, how big a pocket he has or how small a pocket he has and asks, uh, he sells his money and then he demands an ongoing profit uh, or on that money. So, when we talk about riba, technically money is being treated as a pro uh, product uh, and not a medium of exchange. Money or gold and silver, these, uh, these, uh, these are medium of exchange, they are not products. So whenever we will treat a product as money and money as product, we are going to have issues and these issues would be so big that it can uh, you know imp imp impair the distribution of wealth in the public what happens is uh, you know economically speaking mm -hmm. there are four factors of production mm -hmm. land labor um, capital and enterprise economically speaking technically uh, Islam actually recognizes them as three, there are three factors of production, land, labor and enterprise. And the capital, that uh, capital is a medium of exchange, not a, not a factor of production. It helps to convert these factors of production into economic transactions. Mm -hmm. It's a helping aid, it's not a real product. And that is why uh, Quran actually, you know, the Quran used the word zulm mm. when, you know, the real reason why riba is haram is because it is zulm. And it exploits people. And it, and, and you know, the basic reason is zulm. Mm. And whenever the zulm is going to come in, the, it is an atrocity. It is a, it is a it is a source of economic terrorism. Mm -hmm. It terrorizes the, uh, the, the general public, mm -hmm. you know. So whenever a zun would occur, then, you know, the, the aftermath of would be uh, unjust distribution of wealth. All right. Unjust right? distribution of wealth, when we talk about that, Fahim Sadasab, I'd like to have your input as well. Unjust distribution of wealth. There is this whole uh, misunderstanding or misconception between profit and interest. How do you make a simpleton, a simple normal man understand the difference between the two? Uh, that's a very, <laughs> that's a, a simple question but it, it's, it requires a lot of explanation and 
Surah Bakra 275 and 276 are explicit about this that profit is something different, interest is something different. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in my book, I've described these things with in extensive detail. It's called the new finance construct. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I've uh, cracked the interest code in the sense there is an alternative which I proposed, All right. not just for Pakistan but for the entire financial system mm -hmm. because I'm from finance. Uh, when you talk about um, uh, when you talk about uh, this structure, you have to bear in mind that uh, this is evolved. This is not something that just happened yesterday. This system has evolved over the past 400 years and it's been evolved very carefully without alternatives being brought into it. So you have to keep that in the backdrop when you're going to discuss anything. If, um, if uh, a simpleton is supposed to understand the difference between interest and profit, you have to under you just have to try to explain to them was there a loan involved mm -hmm. and was there something in excess of a loan for example in my book i've given the example of goats i start from goats okay, if i were to lend someone four goats and i want five in return after one year so what is that that's basically interest mm. because i want 25% interest now if i lend 100 rupees and I want 25% interest on it, it's the same thing. Now, what is the differentiating factor here? Because I can clearly see you're like, what's the difference between profit and this? You have to go down to the genetics. Why is interest clearly not allowed in Islam go by ahead. Allah Almighty? Because, because according to my research, mm -hmm. interest isolates risk. Now, let's go back. Everything is proportionate in business, in economics. High risk, high return. Low risk, low return. High risk, high return. Mm -hmm. low, low risk, risk low return. Yeah. Although this sounds very simple, mm -hmm. just keep that in mind because we're going to lose focus very quickly. What interest does is it warps the two. Low risk, high return. And all the risk goes on to the borrower. Now what that does is because it's based on a transactional mechanism backed by military force, you have to honor it. That's why it is a preferred mode of distribution. Now, interest is something that warps this proportionality. I can demonstrate it mathematically mm -hmm. as well. It's very, it's, it's actually you have to be very simple about these descriptions. Only then a simpleton will understand. Interest warps this proportionality and a system that brings in proportionality. That is called profit. That's profit. Mm -hmm. And in my book, even on page 125, I have proposed the formula, which basically all you have to do is take out interest and put in that formula. There's going to be a lot of... <laughs> <creaking. Hello, blue. laughs> yeah, but after a while, the evolution starts, that the system becomes non-interest based. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to take it forward as well. Another reason that interest is not allowed in Islam by Allah is because it leads to the zero-sum game. It leads to markets that don't exist. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, uh, the Forex market on Earth trades, if I'm not mistaken, $6.2 trillion worth of foreign exchange every day, simply based on two things, trade differentials and our old friend, interest differentials. Mm -hmm. So that market just is there. You've got the derivatives market based on interest. You've got, I mean, these are all zero-sum games. Exi aside from the trade factor, all of this is zero-sum, so all of the GDP is being lost here. Mm. I've even demonstrated that mathematically in my book, that all if right. all of this were to be brought into the proper GDP of a country or, or a region, you wouldn't have capital issues. All right. You won't have capital problems. Yeah, right? that is what the former Nigerian uh, President Obasanjo said, that the worst thing on this world is compound interest. It is because it destroys economies, it destroys everything in I, that. I've forgotten the page, I've actually calculated how much Africa has paid. Yeah. And they took $525 billion in loans 35 years ago. They have paid the interest, they've paid the principal, and guess how much? They're exactly where they were. Yeah. They're still paying. Mm. Mm. That is the main difference between profit and interest, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to decipher a bit more 
but after uh, Mufti Meng's short uh, decipher on religion. <laughs> So welcome back. We were discussing the concept of riba with our Islamic scholar, Mr. Imran. So, um, uh, Mr. Imran, I have one question for you. That in desperation, some forbidden acts are made permissible. So, in what case is riba uh, permissible? Well, uh, you know, uh, in no case riba is permissible. Oh, okay. Riba. Come what may, riba is, you know, it is haram uh, according to Quran. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will I'll try to, uh, you know, tell you what Quran says. Mm -hmm. uh, Quran says, Alladina yakuluna riba la yakumuna illa kama yakumu alladina yatakhabbatuhu shaitanu min al mas. Like people who eat riba or who take riba or get involved in the transactions of riba are like people who who shaitan or devil has made mad hmm. and the, the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he explains himself welcome back you watching the spirit of Ramadan I'm Umar Khalil but with Rida Shah and we're talking about economy and the different kinds of economy and riba or interest and how it is implicated negatively in our religion and how uh, this differentiated from profit taking. Now uh, this question that I would like to ask both Imran Sabu and Fahim Sabu is the fact that there is a lot of uh, uh, curiosity amongst the youth when they go into the banking sector. Fahim Sabu, you've been in the banking sector as well. Uh, a lot of people, elders say, oh, don't enter the banking sector, you know, this is uh, against the principles of Islam because you are entering into a system that is based on interest. What should one do? Should one enter uh, uh, into the banking sector? Because there are so many MBAs, there are so many people who have studied that and want, and there's no other scope for them other than going to the banking sector. And the whole banking sector, more or less around the world, is based on interest. And Would their job be considered against the principles mm. of Islam? I'll, I'll start with you, Imran Sahib, then I'll go to you, Fahim Sahib. As for now, if we, we just discuss only Pakistan, mm. um, in Pakistan, the Islamic economy, uh, the riba-free economy is 16%. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the banking sector, mm. approximately. And it, it was... It has grown to 16% in last 20 years, approximately. And the riba-based economy is uh, almost... And Fahim Sardar Sahib. Fahim Sardar Sahib, I'm going to come to you now. Sure. This whole debate about uh, interest, interest-free, uh, profit-taking, you kind of explained a little bit about the concept, the difference between the two. Now, one, uh, we, I was asking Imran Sandhu Sahib about the youth entering the sector. Should they enter the sector? How should they enter the sector? And uh, uh, these people, here, young men and women, entering into the banking field, is this against the principles? And of I would Islam? like to add, if it is, what are the alternatives? Okay, now, uh, <laughs> it's my considered understanding, opinion, and through almost 20 years of research that it is n not the child or student's concern of mm -hmm. how to fix the system oh, okay. and they should get into the system mm -hmm. they should run into the system but with the thought that there's something not right we should try to fix the system mm -hmm. you cannot change a system from outside it is designed to repel any change you can never change any system you can never access a fort from the outside, a fort is always opened up from the That's, inside. Yeah. Take the example of the Prophet who is mentioned the most in the Quran. It took me five years to understand, at least from my perspective, why Hazrat Musa, uh, peace be upon him, was mentioned the most in the Quran. We never think about these things. No, because, we don't. Uh, and, and I, where did he come from? He came from inside a system. He came and that's how he was able to challenge the system. That's how he was able to change the system. Mm. What was Hazrat Yusuf? Hazrat Yusuf was working for the mm. Pharaoh. Mm. He was the, the, the treasurer. He was the everything. 
and he brought in a change. So I mean, to answer your question, very simply, what is Islamic or not Islamic, we must always be sensitive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is wrong, this is right. Uh, that, you see, asking a child, a student, to fix the interest system is like asking, uh, asking a baby to change the solar system. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work that mm -hmm. way. They, have, they don't have the understanding, mm -hmm. they don't know what's wrong, they don't know what's right. Let them get into the, get system, into the system with the understanding that, okay, get into it, there's no other option right now, mm -hmm. change it when you have the time. Now, I don't have that luxury because I understand finance. Even as a kid, I could see, I don't see money, I can feel money. Okay. That's the difference because mm -hmm. I don't have that luxury. That's why I wrote this book. There is a solution. Mm -hmm. There's a very simple solution. We just have to do it. It requires two things. Number one, a formula. I proposed the formula on page 125. Two, now this is the difficult part. It's very difficult changing people's minds. Mm -hmm. I've done the first part, I'm working on the second part. And mm -hmm. to convince people to let go of the shackles, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. And by the way, to be very honest and to be very practical and to borrow a word that you've used, pragmatic, to be pragmatic about things, it is not your job to fix the system. But what we can do, we can create awareness regarding this, You can right? create awareness, you can try to understand what the actual problem yeah. is, what is actually wrong with the system. Mm -hmm. Now, I have put up my thoughts for debate. Mm -hmm. Please debate with me if I'm wrong or right. Mm -hmm. But I have stress tested my concept, the, 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 the financial economic system that I've proposed in every aspect. So far, it, it's, work, it, it's going to work. But what I'm trying to understand is why do people go for the extreme? We, we, we don't look at the simple aspects close to our lives which are more Islamic. Now, for example, uh, asking uh, a student to not go into a uh, non-Islamic or Islamic system and to fix it is like, I'll, I'll be more pragmatic about it, is like taking a child and giving them a sword and then putting them into battle right. with an experienced uh, warrior. warrior. Mm. Yeah. How long do you think that child is going to survive? Not even survive a second. Though. Less than mm. 10 seconds yeah. at the most. So mm. this is not for the faint-hearted. This yeah. is not meant to be fixed by uh, the public. This is meant to be fixed by a handful of people. Mm. Mm. And the change, it's, as you said, comes from within, slowly and steadily. Comes but the from change within, yeah. Definitely comes. Imran Sandhu Saab. Coming a little bit outside of this whole profit-taking and <laughs> riba and interest, there is also a huge rise of materialism in our society. Mm. This is something that I really wanted to touch base on. We have become very money-minded. When we talk, when people in society talk, oh, he's very influential. Why? Because he has money. more money. She is a, an excellent person to, uh, to meet. We need to talk to her and meet her more often. Why? Because she is more influential. Why? Because she's more money. She's got a huge house. She's got these resources. Why is materialism the base for people to connect to others and think of others in a higher platform? Wow, Marshall. What a pertinent question it is. Materialism is basically root of all evils as we can understand look when we let me correlate our financial side of the economy to materialism and how materialism becomes a root e of all evils mm. for example we've only discussed interest mm. That Abdullah. is only one aspect. Yeah. Exactly. That is only one major aspect. Mm. But there are other uh, pillars to this materialism as well. For example, bribery. For example, trading wine and trading haram goods. Mm. Trading, uh, mixing water with milk and trading it off. That this is so rampant in our society, Imran Saab. Look at this. Mm. This is also hurting the economy. Mm. Whole of the nations have been abolished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the face of the earth because of this mm. crime. Mm. Th 
that we were having such an interesting discussion and now I'll move to Mr. Fahim. So uh, during the Great uh, Recession, I wouldn't say it was the Great Depression, it was the Great Recession from 2007 onwards. I, uh, according to my research, it was said that Islamic banks, they suffered the minimum amount of damage due to that recession. So why do you, th why do you think the Western world does not adopt uh, Islamic banking system as we see that it is more um, more competent with the ongoing economic trends and everything like that it is more coherent with that so why do you think it does not resonate well with the Westerners okay let's just get one thing very straight here what is known as Islamic banking is not Islamic banking. Oh, okay Sim for one simple reason the pricing mechanism is still the interest rate okay that's what I've proposed here there is a new pricing mechanism which is proportionate mm -hmm. in, in in, 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 which brings in proportionality. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's go along with the discussion. Okay, what is known as Islamic banking in inverted commas, though the reason they basically survived was because, no, that's point number, that's the last point. The West is, to be honest, adopting what is known as Islamic banking. Right. Merrill Lynch, at a time when uh, everybody was looking towards the US stock markets, Merrill Lynch had actually set up an Islamic banking unit. And everyone was wondering, what is Merrill Lynch doing? And guess what? They made money. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are adopting it for simple economic reasons, which brings us to the point number three. The reason Islamic banks survived the 2007 onwards meltdown in the United States of America, which, which then cascaded onto Europe and everywhere else, the is because the, the, they were not taking too many loans. Mm -hmm. That's it. And okay. they were less exotic. That's mm -hmm. it. What was happening in, the, in, the, in the, the typical banking and investment banking system was, uh, I've described it in my book, that when the pharaoh was building a, a pyramid, mm -hmm. it, uh, it's, it, it's, it's bigger at the bottom, yeah. smaller at the top. Yeah. Now, you might think I'm being very stupid here, but, but believe me, we have people who do much worse than what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen an inverse pyramid? No. Well, guess what? The financial system is in, it's an inverse pyramid, and that's why it collapses. Mm -hmm. When you have an inverse pyramid, you have a small base and a bigger top, yeah. it's going to fall in either, in either yeah. direction. So these Islamic banks, I keep doing this because I'm sorry, I, I don't agree with that mm -hmm. at all. They just had a broader base and they had a smaller size. That that's the sense. only thing. Okay. And because the layering of exotic products was not there, mm -hmm. hence the smaller size. Mm -hmm. Now what happened in the traditional uh, banking and investment banking markets was these products were layered upon each other. Mm -hmm. Derivatives upon derivatives upon derivatives. Bets upon bets upon bets upon bets. So when one thing sparked, everyone thought nothing's going to happen. It just started, it started having a domino and a, and a cascading effect and that mm -hmm. started a process which America has not recovered from. Hmm. Since then? Since then. Every month, America pumps in $90 billion do worth of money into their markets. People don't know about this. Mm -hmm. So I keep telling people who want to go abroad to study, that's a bankrupt country, why do you want to go there? Go to China if you want to study. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the, the, the bottom line, and just to be very simple about it, is that what's, what we call Islamic banks, uh, they have a slightly more conservative lending process. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's it. And they have the same interest rates? Yes. They, they price it. You can call it whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can call it markup. You can call it profit and loss sharing. No. No, no, no. All That's, right. Yeah. Uh, Imran Sandhu Saab, the whole materialism aspect of what we were discussing before the break, how does that uh, have a cascading effect on the economy, on the general lives of people in a society? Because he were, for himself was talking about cascading effect of banking. I wanted to kind of put that cascading effect into materialism and its effects on the society. Well, the, uh, we, uh, you know, the human nature. Let's go into deeper into a human nature. Hmm. Naturally, a human being is has been made from the best of the molds. Laqad khalaqnal insana fi ahsani taqweem. I have created man from the best of the taqweem or mold. Thumma radadnahu asfala safilin. But then I have made him go to the lowest of the low. Illa alladheena amanu wa amilu salihati. 
so not those who are people of iman and do good deeds falahum ajrun ghairu mamnun you know what is the mold that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us from it is on top hmm. the soul second our mind and third our bodily desires right or our body body has desires it has to eat it has to begin food it has to go and you know uh, reproduce these are all desires that a human body should have but then there are ways to you know ways to uh, get those desires completed what is the principle of getting those de- desires completed the soul has to tell the mind and the, then the mind has to tell the body we are of course here to talk about economy to talk about islam and to talk about how economy has been described in detail by islam by the quran and by the sunnah one of the principles of islam is zakat and that is what i want to come to you uh, uh, to talk to you about uh, fahim sahab zakat a lot of people talk about zakat but many do not know what are the basic principles of zakat how much do you need to give to whom you need to give and in which manner do you need to give it so sure. would you kindly kind of give us a brief detail about all of that uh, sure zakat is obviously uh, what is zakat zakat mm-hmm. is basically uh, I'll, i'll speak in very simple language mm-hmm. it is automatic pruning it is automatic pruning of excess capital and it is basically the diversion of excess capital pruned excess capital to those who don't have capital mm-hmm. simple Perfect. now if you it's it's actually a concept that is being enforced in the west mm. under a different name social security you see people don't don't that is so true yeah, europe especially absolutely and then let's dig deeper uh people like to like to talk about the french egalitarian system and the mm. swedish system and everything the french system is based on code napoleon and code napoleon is based on the quran minus the punishments the swedish social system is based on hazrat umar's yeah. uh, social system so i mean it's not far from we don't have to go there and study anything we just need to sort of open up our books and you know mm. dust it off and study what used to be and actually used, implement it actually implement it right yeah. absolutely so zakat is is automatic pruning which <clears throat> is what is pruning pruning means growth when you cut something it will grow in a little while so if you have excess capital that you're not using if you have excess assets that you're not using it is advisable to just calculate the amount how much is in excess that you haven't used in one year and whatever the figure uh, is uh, comes up just give 2 to 2.5% i usually do it by 3% just make it of the excess capital that yeah. you have not used in a period of yeah. one year yeah. and i would like to add here is that we always uh, think that zakat is from the lands we have or the gold we have i think if we have more clothes in our closet and you know think shoes like that we can donate to charity Do, does that come under zakat too i uh, i think uh, scholars can basically answer, answer that question that i hope. think you should add to it mm-hmm. i think you should add that into zakat because it's something in excess you don't mm-hmm. need it now the only thing that i is being from the corporate sector and uh, being constantly uh, uh, absorbed in finance is i would just like request people to when you're giving zakat try to help someone set up a business mm. sustainable don't development don't just give them money don't just give them money give them a small plan business plan ke i'll fund your business mm. that's what mohammed yunus did with really? ramin bank micro there you uh, go. because debt. you see pakistan uh, may have debt issues which frankly i don't agree with uh, that's another debate but we are the i think possibly one of the most charitable countries on earth so if you have let's put the numbers to this discussion mm-hmm. if we have let's say 500 billion to 700 billion rupees uh, being given out as zakat do we even realize how much capital that is so many businesses so many yeah, smes yeah. can be set up for 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 the uh, for the for the for the Dope. for the needy yeah. they don't need to ask for money again but mm-hmm. you see i'm being utopian i understand but we have to start from somewhere mm-hmm. giving someone money 
and then giving someone money and telling them that Use your money care. in this manner. In this yeah. manner, so that you set up an SME, mm -hmm. so that you can start earning money, and mm -hmm. after three years, you're going to be giving money mm -hmm. to others. So there's a there's a multiplier effect. Mm -hmm. There's exactly. that chain. That Doppler effect. In exactly. Fact. There's the economic chain reaction that mm -hmm. you have to cause. Imran Sandhu, 